Welcome to Brainish English Stories. Once upon a time, there was a king and a queen. They were very sad because they didn't have any children. Finally, the queen had a daughter. They had a big celebration for her christening, and all the fairies in the kingdom came. There were seven fairies, and each one gave the princess a special gift. After the christening, there was a feast for the fairies. But then, an old fairy, who hadn't been seen for a long time, showed up. She was upset because she hadn't been invited. One of the young fairies heard her mumbling and worried she might give the princess a bad gift. The fairies started giving their gifts. The youngest fairy made the princess very beautiful. The next gave her cleverness. The third made sure she could do everything gracefully. The fourth made her a perfect dancer. The fifth gave her a beautiful singing voice. And the sixth made her great at playing musical instruments. But when it was the old fairy's turn, she said something terrible. She said the princess would prick her finger on a spindle and fall asleep forever. Everyone was sad. But then, the young fairy said the princess wouldn't die. She would just sleep for a hundred years until a prince woke her up. The king told everyone to let the princess sleep until it was time for her to wake up. The good fairy who had put her to sleep was far away in the kingdom of Madakin. But she found out about what happened right away thanks to a little dwarf who could travel really fast with his magic boots. The fairy came quickly in a fiery chariot pulled by dragons. When she arrived, she touched everything in the palace with her wand, except the king and queen. She put all the people and animals to sleep, so they would wake up when the princess did. Even the spits with food on them and the fire fell asleep. It all happened very fast because fairies work quickly. The king and queen kissed their daughter goodbye without waking her up. Then they left and told everyone to stay away from the palace. But they didn't need to worry because in just a short time, a thick forest grew around the palace. No one could get through it, so the princess would be safe while she slept. After a hundred years, a prince from a nearby kingdom was hunting in the area. He saw the towers of the palace and asked what it was. People told him different stories, but an old man said it was where a princess slept, waiting for a prince to wake her up. The prince was determined to see for himself. As he approached the forest, the trees and bushes moved out of his way. He walked through and found the palace. Inside, everyone was asleep. But when he saw the princess, he was amazed by her beauty and fell to his knees in front of her. When the enchantment finally ended, the princess woke up and saw the prince. She looked at him with eyes full of love and said, Is it really you, my prince? You waited for such a long time. The prince was overjoyed by her words and the way she spoke. He couldn't find the right words to express his happiness and gratitude. He told her he loved her more than anything. Their conversation wasn't very organized but they didn't mind because they were deeply in love. The prince was a bit awkward, but that's normal when you're in love. The princess, on the other hand, had plenty of time to think about what to say, thanks to the good dreams the fairy gave her during her long sleep. They talked for hours and still didn't say everything they wanted to. While they talked, everyone else in the palace woke up too. They were all hungry because they weren't in love like the prince and princess. The lady in charge of the princess's things got impatient and announced that dinner was ready. The prince helped the princess get up. She was dressed beautifully, even though her outfit looked a bit old-fashioned. 
but she still looked charming and lovely. They went to the dining hall, where they had supper served by the princess's servants. The musicians played old songs, but they sounded wonderful even though they hadn't been played in a hundred years. After supper, they wasted no time and got married in the castle's chapel by the royal priest. They didn't sleep much that night, especially the princess, who didn't need much sleep. The next morning, the prince had to leave to go back to the city, where his father was worried about him. The prince told his father that he got lost while hunting in the forest and stayed with a charcoal burner who gave him some simple food. His father, the king, believed him because he was a good man. But his mother wasn't so sure. She noticed that he went hunting almost every day and sometimes stayed out for several nights. She started to suspect he was married because he spent two whole years with the princess, and they even had two children named Dawn and Day. The king didn't want this to happen, so he made a rule that no one could have spindles. But years later, the princess found an old woman spinning in a tower. The princess wanted to try it and pricked her finger, falling asleep. People tried to wake her up, but nothing worked. The king remembered what the fairies said and put the princess in a beautiful room where she slept like an angel for a hundred years. The queen asked her son many times about how he spent his time, but he was afraid to tell her his secret because she was from a family of ogres. He loved her but he feared her because there were rumors that she had ogre-like tendencies and struggled to control herself around children. So, he kept quiet. After the king died, the prince became the ruler and revealed his marriage. He brought his queen and their children to the palace in a grand procession. He had to go to war, leaving the queen mother in charge. She sent the queen and the children to a house in the woods, where she could fulfill her terrible desires without anyone noticing. A few days later, she told the head cook, I want to eat little Dawn for dinner tomorrow. The cook, knowing he couldn't disobey an ogre, pretended to agree but secretly hid Dawn and served the ogre a lamb instead. Eight days later, the queen said, I'll eat little day for supper. Again, the cook hid day and served the ogre a tender kid instead. But one evening, the queen mother said, I want to eat the queen with the same sauce I had with her children. The cook couldn't think of any more tricks. He was desperate and didn't know what to do. So, he decided to save himself by going to the queen's room with a dagger, pretending to be angry. He couldn't lie to her, so he told her what the queen mother had ordered with great respect. Go ahead, do it, the queen said, stretching out her neck. Follow your orders, and then I can see my children, my dear children, whom I loved so much. She thought they were dead because they were taken away without her knowing. No, no, madam, the cook cried, tears streaming down his face. You won't die, and you'll see your children right away. But first, you must come with me to my room, where I've hidden them. I'll trick the queen again by giving her a young deer instead of you. So, he took her to his room. While she hugged her children and cried with them, he cooked a young deer for the queen's supper. She ate it up, thinking it was the queen. She was pleased with her cruel plan and made up a story to tell the king when he came back, saying that wolves had eaten the queen and her children. One evening, while the ogre queen was wandering around the palace, sniffing for fresh meat as usual, she heard Little Day crying because his mom was going to punish him for misbehaving. She also heard Little Dawn begging for mercy for her brother. 
The ogre recognized the voices of the queen and her children and got furious that she had been tricked. She ordered, in a terrifying voice, that the next morning they should bring a tub filled with scary creatures like toads and snakes into the courtyard to throw the queen, her children, the cook, his wife, and his maid into it, all with their hands tied behind their backs. They were about to do it when the king unexpectedly arrived on horseback and asked what was happening. No one dared to tell him, so the ogre queen, enraged by the turn of events, jumped into the tub herself and was immediately devoured by the creatures she had ordered to kill the others. The king was sad because she was his mother, but he quickly found comfort in his beautiful wife and their lovely children.